Hello everyone, welcome back to the workshop. In this video, we are gonna be forging a blank that I sell over at my website, blacksmithpdfs.com. You can find a link to that in the description down below. And then I will also have Jessica at some point add a little card uh, that you can click on. That's a direct link to take you over to our website if you have any interest in purchasing one of these blanks from us. So let's get right into the video. Okay, so the blank that we're gonna be looking at today is a 10 inch skillet bent blank in our hook tail skillet handle here. Now this design here is very versatile. You can hang this up on pot racks all by itself or hang it up at camp. It has a nice little hook on the end uh, so you could just kind of hook it over a branch or what have you. Uh, so we will be forging this today. And again, you can get this by itself, just the 10 inch skillet blank itself, or you can get it as a kit, like a hooktail kit or a traditional handle style kit. You can get all as a kit and it comes with two rivets that you'll need later on to assemble it. It comes with the handle and comes with the skillet body. So a lot of great options. So without further ado, let's get this in the fire. We'll start with the handle first and then we will move on to the skillet body and then finally the assembly work of all three. Okay, first things first in forging this skillet blank. For the handle, what we're going to do is we're going to actually hammer up the sides here. And what we, this will do for us is this will actually get, stretch out this material a little bit. We're going to straighten it out. You'll have to do this on the regular. Straighten it up from time to time because it will want to get crooked on you as you compress the sides down. Now, for this particular handle, I'm actually just going to leave the cup that you see in it here. I like to have a little bit of roundness or radius to the handle. I feel like it's a bit more comfortable to hold on to. And when I have sold these in the past, when I've sold skillets in the past, people really enjoyed when there was a little bit of dome um, to the skillet handles themselves. Uh, they just feel a little bit better in the hand. Something to keep in mind. Now for your own skillet handles, there is always the option of texturing this first. You can ball peen, you can cross peen texture it. There's a lot of different options here uh, with using a blank like what we're doing. There's a lot of room for improvement for yourself uh, to individualize your own skillets, uh, your bodies and your pan handles. Lots of room. We've just simply eliminated the guesswork and all the hard work to get to this preformed shape to begin with. Okay, I'm gonna dress this up just a bit more. It's just light hammer work now. Again, you can do this however you like. This is your project. Once you buy a blank, <laughs> you can do it however you see fit. I like hammering from this side to eliminate hammer blows on the other side, on the top side. It's okay to add a few hammer blows in there. And we're just getting the ham, we're just getting it straightened up here. Ready for the next part. There we go. So we'll brush this really nice. Now, like I said, you could texture this if you like. I personally like the clean look of this handle the way it is. If you'd like to texture it, ball peen texture could look nice. Also, you could chisel some lines and make like a little window and then do some ball peen texture in it. I've done handles that way before. Um, again, make it your own, get creative with this. So now that we're done with this little doming operation and we've got that about where we want it, the next thing is I'm gonna put a little bend in it to bend the handle a certain degree. And then I'm going to work at taking that bend back out. So I kind of want to take a little bit of that bend out because I want this to be subtle the way it comes into the pan handle. And as you can see, it's almost imperceivable. That bend is, by the time it's on the, by the, time it's on the skillet, it'll just have a really nice flowing look to it. So that's a little bit of a secret there. So now we'll work on the hook in, but before we do, we're actually gonna take this end, and because the skillets are round, this little fishtail here, 
we are going to put it over the hardy hole or try to attempt to here. So we're going to hammer right dead center. And what that does for us is that gives us a little bit of a curvature, a little bit of a scallop to it. And that might be a bit too much. We might have to take that out by a little bit and that'll make it fit snugly on the pan. If you leave it flat, that radius is curving away from it and therefore your ears won't fit, sit flat. You'll have rock to it. So just giving it that little bit of a curve that way will help it fit up on the pan a bit better. So now, onto the hook. All right, now with the handle facing upside down, we're gonna roll our tip away into a little rat's tail on the end just so this way it blunts that off nicely. Make sure that sits nice and flush. And then we're gonna flip the whole piece over and we're gonna roll out our hook, our actual hook portion here. If it twists on you, you might have to straighten it up a bit. And just like that, our little hook is done. That simple. So before we start forging on our skillet body itself, we need to designate how far in we want to come for us to have a nice pan lip. And depending on how far in you come is how tall those sides, eventual sides will be able to be. So if you're going to do a sauce pan, you're gonna to have to go in further. If you're doing just a, like a, almost like a flat iron or a griddle type, you can have less sidewalls, but you have to come in a certain amount. My suggestion is to use a pair of dividers like you see here and draw, set them at two inches apart and then scribe yourself just like so a line across the piece. I don't know if you guys can see that in the video there. It's hard to tell on my end. Hopefully you guys can see that line somewhat. I've already went through the trouble of scribing this around with a two inch lip all the way around. So that's what you want to do. You want to be able to have this, hopefully you guys can see that, at a nice two inch follow line. Now what we're gonna do is we're actually going to follow this with a set hammer. So we're going to use a set hammer. I'm going to use a soft face hammer to hit the set hammer. If you have, if you don't have a set hammer and you just have like some mild steel laying around, get some mild, mild steel square stock and, you know, hold it in a pair of tongs or drill a hole through it and, you know, wrap a piece of metal in it or whatever as your set hammer and then radius the edges off ever so lightly. Just, you know, roll the edges off slightly. And then what we're going to do is we're actually going to follow that line right on around when we put this over our swedge block. And uh, I'll show you how that works here in just a second. So we're just gonna follow to the inside of this line all the way around, and that's gonna sink our bottom and bring up our sides, almost all in the same, uh, the same operation. So without further ado, now that you know what we're doing there, let's get this plate hot and we'll take it to the swedge block and we'll have more to discuss there. Okay, so now that our plate of steel is heating up over there on the fire, let's talk real quick about swedge blocks, if you will. The main purpose of this operation, the main key factor that we need to accomplish is we need to have the line that we're forging on just inside of this edge. This can even be done on the step of your anvil if you want. It's a little easier to do in a swedge block depression like this, but that's really the only prerequisite to be able to forge a skillet out. You need to create a differences in heights. So what happens is, is the metal is supported here on top and it's not supported here. So when you drive down with the set hammer and the saw face hammer, it offsets those two planes of the offsets those two surfaces and creates two separate planes. And what that'll do is that'll eventually want to work itself up on the edge. So that's really what we're trying to accomplish with this mission here. We're just trying to get these to offset. We're sinking the bottom somewhat, but the swedge block depression is irrelevant to this operation. All we're trying to do is get that area right where we're hammering to offset in plane, if that makes sense. 
So with that being said, you don't have to have a fancy swedge block like this one in order to do skillets. In fact, if you have a section of pipe, you can do that. You can use a section, a cross section of pipe. In fact, I should have a video out on the channel at the recording of this video here that should be linked up somewhere in a card right about now that goes over all the different swedge block alternatives. Again, you could just have a section of pipe that you cut off, smooth off the edges, give them a little radius on the edge there, and then just use that. You don't have to have a swedge block in order to do this process. So that is kind of a key thing to keep in mind here. I know sometimes it can look like this. It's a very daunting task, but it's actually very, very simple. So once this place, plate gets hot, I'll be right back with you and we will start the forging process. Okay, so we've got this piece nice and warmed up here. I'm gonna lay it over the swedge block. And now comes the hard part. This is probably the first, this is the hardest part that you're probably gonna encounter is finding that line to follow. Once you find the line and you go around once, it's easy to follow that line in the future. But to start with, it really is a pain to find that line. So as you can see, we're just offsetting the material a little at a time. Again, we're gonna strive to follow this line right on around. One of the key tricks here is to make sure that you keep all of your hammer blows nice and even. That's, that's kind of the main, that's the main thing you're looking for here. You just keep all your hammer blows nice and even. That means you're not really wailing it hard in one spot and not so hard in another. All right, we will get this hot again. And hopefully you guys can start seeing that pan starting to form. There's the bottom of the pan and the sides are already coming up. Okay, so now that we've got that bottom sunk down, now we're gonna bring up the sides the rest of the way. If you've noticed the plate's kind of took and it's got sunk down here, but the top part has kind of bent over. But when we take out that bend, that's going to stand that sidewall right up. And the way that we're gonna do that is not with a regular hand hammer. We're gonna either use a soft face mallet, like a rawhide mallet, or a wooden mallet. Um, again, this doesn't have to be something expensive. This can just be a piece of two by four, really, um, on a handle. Something that you can whack on the sides without marring them all up with extra hammer blows. So in this case, I'm actually gonna use my raw hide mallet since that's my preferred tool of choice for this. I'm going to set this up on the edge. So instead of flat like this, we're gonna set it up to where we're gonna hit right on the apex of that bend. And right on around we go. So as we flatten that out against the anvil, that is what stands those sidewalls straight up for us. Just like so, you can see how much depth we've got right out of that. And again, hopefully you all can see that. There's that little apex of the bend is what we're hammering on to straighten those walls straight out. And right there is already, I mean, that's basically a skillet taking place. Now, say you want a saucepan. What you're gonna do is you're gonna heat this up. And then all, instead of just standing it on flat like this, you're gonna pull it up a little extra high. 
and you're gonna hit in here and that's gonna round this. And as it rounds it, it's gonna bring it up into a saucepan orientation for you. So very quick, very quick and simple and easy to do. This really takes no time at all. So let's get this hot again. Okay, got that piece nice and hot again. Again, like I said, holding it on the anvil, that angle where that apex is. And all we're doing is just taking that bend out of it. Okay. Get it brushed down. Okay, so we've got this piece all cleaned up, this pan all ground off of all of its scale. Now, obviously you can take this up to a higher finish if you would like. It is not necessary, however. Um, just like cast iron has some surface imperfections and pores and some porosity um, that you see in a lot of cast iron skillets and things, it is okay if a carbon steel skillet isn't just mere finish. Um, obviously, the higher the finish you go with it, um, the slicker it'll end up being. So uh, keep that in mind depending on what you're trying to go for there. But basically, walk you through real quick. You can see I already have one rivet in this piece. I've pre-drilled the handle first. So I drilled a hole here and over here, and then I clamped it with the clamp like what you see here, Visegrip, and I drilled all the way through one hole and then riveted that hole. What that does is that allows me to take off this clamp now and then drill this hole and that hole will line up perfectly like it's supposed to. So let me go ahead and open this up here. So now, now that I've done that, now I can actually put a rivet through here. I can drill this hole and rivet it and know that it's gonna keep my handle square and straight in line. So let's go ahead and drill this now. All right, so now for the final bit of the assembly work. We're gonna put this next rivet through here. This is rivet number two out of your little baggie there that you'll get with this kit. We'll insert it with the dome head through the front side of the pan. Same as we have done on the other one, presumably at this point. I'm setting it over the horn of the anvil. If you don't have a square horn, you can use a round horn of an anvil. And now we're gonna rivet this down. And just like that, that thing is not going anywhere. Good and solid. You can see how that looks. That handle is a very attractive handle style, if I do say so myself. So there we have it. So now, on to our last portion of this process, which is the seasoning work. Now, my favorite way of seasoning my skillets that, that I were to make would be to do it in the oven. If you have an oven at home, you can put it in the oven, 
set it at 550, or if you have a very broil setting, like in an electric oven, go ahead and set that on a high very broil and bring this pan to where it turns blue. And it will turn blue at that color. And when it turns blue, you can either rub oil on it or you could have already coated this with a food grade oil. Um, that's key. It has to be a food safe oil, clearly, because someone's going to be cooking in this, um, potentially yourself or maybe your customer. Now, as a piece of advice, there is a little bit of an advisory here, is that whatever oil you use, you need to make sure that you let your customer know just in case there is some sort of food allergies or anything like that. So use something that is, you know, fairly, um, you know, allergenic safe there if you can. So now we will take this thing and we will go over to the forge. I'm going to do it this way just because I'm in the shop. We're going to heat it up over the forge flame itself and we're going to rub this down with coconut oil because that's my oil of choice in my house. Okay, so here we go. We've got it nice and hot. It's went up just a little bit past that blue point. I'm going to shake out some coconut oil uh, onto this. As you can see, the coconut oil has kind of solidified. I'm also going to use a rag to work this around. It is good to be in a well-ventilated space, by the way, when you're doing this. That is optimum, generally. So we're going to rub this down here on the back with oil. And it's going to darken up the finish considerably. That's how you know you're seasoning it. You want that finish to get darker as it goes. Make sure we rub some of this coconut oil on the handle as well. I want the handle to be nice and coated with some coconut oil. Again, this could be a food grade oil of your choosing. It does not have to be coconut oil. This is just what I'm using. And in fact, some people are allergic to coconut oil, so just keep that in mind. Uh, this may not be what you would want to season your pans with, unless you put a disclaimer out there, um, potentially, for the potential customers that may be buying your coconut oil. I'm gonna get a little bit more out of this can here. Never have too much oil on these pans. It just helps it season up really nice like. Now the great thing about steel pans is that they season more with age. So as long as you don't let the pan burn dry, that means with no oil in it or no bacon or no lard or shortening mix, as long as you just, as long as you keep up a layer of oil in it while you cook, the thing will just darken and season more with age. So here we go. Just getting the whole handle coated. That way I've got some nice rust preventative on the handles. Now I've been asked a couple times about this. Well, won't the handle rust eventually? And not really. Um, I have pans in my household that I've had for four years now, and uh, they see daily use. They don't rust. Now, if you have it, if you have a pan that sits long term without any use in it, not having any use, then you might have a problem um, with rust on that. But the oils in our hand and our skin, and from constantly cooking in the pan and get a little bit of oil on it and stuff, it constantly kind of works into the finish. And this finish just gets more beautiful as you go, um, as you use it. And, you know, again, something like this can be a real joy to cook with. So, so there you have it. That is how you make one of our 10 inch hooktail skillets that you can find over our website, Christ at blacksmithpbs.com. Almost mentioned my personal website. That's where you can find my artwork over at christcenteredironworks.com. But yeah, if you want to pick yourself up one of these skillets, blanks, uh, sets, or all the host of other things that we offer over there, we offer a ton of different options um, from spatulas and ladles and spatula and ladle kits and 
you name it out there to help you as a blacksmith, definitely go check out our website over at blacksmithpds.com. Again, greatly pre appreciate everyone watching this. Thank you to all of the channel members that make videos like this possible and all the people out there that pick up these skillets. Um, you all are greatly appreciated. And uh, yeah, that's it. That's it for today. God bless each and every last one of you out there. And uh, we'll catch you on the next one. Thanks for watching.